At the dawn of the 20th century, John Rockefeller's ruthless maneuvering, including bribery, price fixing, corporate espionage, and creating shell companies to conduct illegal activities, had won his Standard Oil Company control of 90% of U.S. oil production and made him the richest man in world history with a net worth of over half a trillion of today's dollars. In 1911, the Supreme Court ruled that Standard Oil constituted an unreasonable monopoly and splintered the behemoth into 34 companies that became Exxon, Mobil, Chevron, Amoco, Marathon, and others. Ironically, the breakup increased rather than diminished Rockefeller's personal wealth. Rockefeller donated an additional $100 million from that windfall to his philanthropic front group, the General Education Board, to cement the streamlining and homogenization of medical schools and hospitals. A pill for an ill became his foundation slogan. In 1913, he incorporated the Rockefeller Foundation. A congressional investigation described the foundation as a self-serving artifice posing a menace to the future political and economic welfare of the nation. Using his foundation's wealth and influence and working with his friend Andrew Carnegie, Rockefeller dispatched educator Abraham Flexner on a cross-country tour to catalog the status of America's 155 medical colleges and hospitals. The Rockefeller Foundation's Flexner Report recommended centralizing America's medical schooling and reorienting these institutions according to germ theory, which held that germs alone caused disease, and advocated for the pharmaceutical paradigm, which emphasized targeting particular germs with specific drugs rather than fortifying the immune system through healthy eating, clean water, and good nutrition. With that narrative in hand, Rockefeller financed the campaign to consolidate mainstream medicine, adopt the philosophies of the growing pharmaceutical industry, and shutter its competition. Rockefeller's crusade caused the closure of more than half of American medical schools, fostered public and press scorn for homeopathy, osteopathy, chiropractic, nutritional, holistic, functional, integrative, and natural medicines and led to the incarceration of many practicing physicians. To reassure public politicians and press of its benign purposes, the Rockefeller Foundation declared its ambition to eliminate hookworm, malaria, and yellow fever. The Rockefeller Sanitary Commission for the Eradication of Hookworm Disease sent teams of doctors, inspectors, and lab technicians to administer deworming medication across 11 southern states. These ambassadors systematically exaggerated the medication's efficacy, glossed over its regular fatalities, and through the graces of Rockefeller's mercenary army of journalists for hire, ignited enough favorable interest for the foundation to justify the proposed expansion into the colonized world. The Rockefeller Foundation's carefully heralded public health attainments eclipsed popular revulsion for the many abuses Americans associated with the Standard Oil Petroleum Empire. Its patronage of the League of Nations Health Organization gave the Rockefeller Foundation global reach and an impressive cortege of high-level contacts among the international elites. The Rockefeller Foundation provided almost half the budget for the organization following its founding in 1922 and populated the ranks with its veterans and favorites. The Rockefeller Foundation imbued the League with its philosophy, structure, values, precepts, and ideologies, all of which its successor body, the World Health Organization, inherited at its inauguration in 1948. By the time John D. Rockefeller disbanded the Rockefeller Foundation's International Health Division in 1951, it had spent the equivalent of billions of dollars on tropical disease campaigns in almost 100 countries and colonies. But these projects were window dressings for the Foundation's more venal preoccupations. According to a 2017 report, U.S. Philanthropic Capitalism and the Global Health Agenda. 
The E-Day Fix was opening developing world markets for U.S. oil, mining, pharmaceutical, telecom, and banking multinationals, in which the foundation and the Rockefeller family were also invested. To be continued. To get the complete story,